What's up, everyone? Welcome to Ben's Car Reviews. I'm Ben, and today we'll be dissecting the 2024 Honda Pilot. Let's get right into it with the chart. You have six different trim options for you on the 2024 Pilot. LX, Sport, EXL, Touring, Trail Sport, and Elite, ranging from prices of nearly $37,100 to over $52,000 up at the Elite. So hopefully, you know, across these six, in a price difference of about $15,000, there is a Pilot that fits your budget with the looks that you want. Engine options make it easy because there's one and only 3.5 liter V6 giving you 285 horsepower, 262 pound-feet of torque. Pretty adequate power here for a vehicle like this. It is large, it needs some power, but you know that's more than necessarily needs, so good to see there. Paired with a 10-speed automatic transmission, uh, drivetrain, you're gonna get a lot of two-wheel drive standard, all-wheel drive option, which is disappointing, especially at these price points. Not disappointing just because it should have it anyway, being a, a large SUV. But these price points, man, it absolutely should be standard. But at least you get it on the Trail Sport and the Elite. MPGs, essentially the same as each other. Two-wheel drive, 19 city, 27 highway. All-wheel drive, 19 city as well, but a little worse on the highway at 25. Real quick, guys, here at Ben's Car Reviews. I strive to bring the most accurate relevant information under 10 minutes. There's no misleading and no waste of time. If that's something that's intriguing to you and you like this content as you watch, please like and subscribe so I can continue to grow the channel. Let's keep going. Looking at the exterior here, and clearly not much has been done to alter the 2023 looks. I think that's a good thing because Honda has really nailed the design on this current gen Pilot. Rugged and sleek and strikes you as being a plenty modern uh, you know, to compete in the busy competitive segment. This Pilot is really getting the job done. You have a honeycomb grille with mesh detailing inserts on the front end for a signature and very nice look overall. The rear end is also designed very nice. I also am digging the pilot name in between the taillights in that black bar area. Really looks sharp. You get LED headlights and taillights on all trims. You get LED fog lights even standard on all trims except the LX. Rear privacy glass on all trims. Body colored roof spoiler on all trims, which I always love to see. Definitely gives these vehicles a nicer look. LX, EXL, and Trail Sport have 18 inch wheels. Sport, Touring, and Elite have 20 inch wheels. The Trail Sport is definitely the off road themed and capable trim in the lineup. Of course, every brand needs to have one of those these days to beef it up. It has an off-road tuned suspension, steel underbody skid plates, front and rear recovery points, exclusive 18-inch wheels wrapped in all-terrain tires, and an extra inch of ride height. There's up to seven different drive modes depending how you buy. Normal, Eco, Sport, and Tow. Tow and Snow are found on all of them. But you can get tra uh, Trail Mode and Sand Mode as well, but you need all-wheel drive setup, and you can't get those two on the base two trims, even if you have all wheel drive. They're available above the base two. There's a programmable power tailgate on all these trims, roof rails on all trims, but the LX and EXL, uh, and they offer a lot of functionality up there, especially with all the Honda accessories. I'm thrilled to share that you get a spare tire standard, so cheers to that. Two wheel drive max towing is 3,500 pounds. All wheel drive max towing is 5,000 pounds. A trailer hitch is only standard on the Trail Sport, this thing measures in at 199.9 inches long, 70.9 inches tall, has a max ground clearance of 8.6 inches on the Trail Sport, the rest are 7.6, and at the most weighs nearly 4,700 pounds. Uh, and like I mentioned, lots of great and useful Honda genuine accessories you can add on to really outfit your pilot with a lot of additional capability. I think the EXL is the best bang for your buck uh, when it comes to this. Uh, pilot as you'll see in the next section you pick up many more standard interior features and that's largely the reason I'm choosing it given it's roughly 5,000 more than the base trim in the lineup the exterior looks stay relatively the same and the powertrain obviously doesn't upgrade for going any higher up the trim ladder so overall I think the EXL is the best for your money and let's not forget too it's still a $42,000 car at least so going any higher up the trim ladder you know it's really gonna add a lot of expenses to an already expensive vehicle so this is probably the best bang for your buck First impressions of this interior is a good one. I think it's been really well done as far as the design and what's offered per trim level. I think it all makes sense, uh, you could say. This is a big vehicle. Standard seating for eight people is generally what you'll find here. However, the EXL needs to be optioned to reach eight, and the Trail Sport only accommodates seven. There's a seven inch full color infotainment touchscreen on the bottom two trims, and the rest get a nine inch setup. Another seven inch driver's info area uh, is what you'll find on nearly every trim, but the Elite upgrades you to a nicer 10.2 inch driver's digital gauge cluster. Apple CarPlay Android Auto is standard and you will get wireless on the top trims. Heads up display standard on the Elite. Panoramic moonroof standard on Trail Sport and above. 
the LX and the Sport get you a 7 speaker sound system, EXL and Trail Sport get 9 speaker systems, and the Bose Premium Sound is standard on the Touring and the Elite. There's a 10-way power driver's seat on Sport and above, wireless charging pad on the EXL and up, leather trim seats begin on the EXL, the LX and the Sport get cloth. There's a fold flat second row center seat standard on the Touring and Elite, and that can even be removed entirely. Trail Sport gets embroidered headrests and orange stitching. Heated front seats on the Sport and higher. Elite has standard heated and ventilated front seats and heated rear seats. Hidden storage compartment in the back cargo area for extra storage. Honda Sensing is standard, which includes numerous driver's assist, safety, and technology features, including collision braking and lane departure mitigation. Overall, there's a lot to like about this interior. Uh, I think Honda kept in mind that having these price points mean you can't short the lower trims too much on amenities or people will look elsewhere to buy. I think the levels of trims and features are laid out as well as we could expect. My one knock would be making the screen smaller for the base trims. I really think we need to be over that in 2024 across the board in all brands. We just need to stop doing that or at least make the base trim larger to make the higher trims even bigger. But you shouldn't be having to get a small screen for 40 plus thousand dollars. Interview guys, if you're in the market for a large SUV capable of fitting tons of people in the back, then you do have more options beyond this one. You're looking at maybe the Subaru Ascent, uh, of course, Toyota Highlander, Toyota 4Runner even, Ford Explorer. Uh, a lot of options in this segment and a lot of good options as well. Um, but certainly here with this, you're looking at a lot of great features. Honda is so reputable, They're always delivering a reliable, great product for families. And I think this design is quite outstanding. And compared to the rest, I think it's right up there with it, if not one of the best, inside and out. So I don't think you're going to have to settle when it comes to looks. You don't have to settle when it comes to the engine because you're getting plenty of power. You know, MPGs comparable to anything else you're going to see. It's really just going to come down to what you prefer and if, uh, you know, you like something more for a little less money somewhere else. But if you want to go with this, I think you're making a great decision. Uh, I would totally buy this if this was what I was in the market for. Hopefully this video laid things out in a clear way for you guys. Thank you for watching this Ben's Car Review. Please subscribe if not already. If you have an idea for a future review, drop in the comments and I'll see what I can do. If you'd like to become a member of the channel, I have that option now. Check that out and join me if you'd like and I'll catch you on the next Ben's Car Review.